Yes. Okay, great. Hey everyone, my name is Ash Shukla and I want to say welcome to Financial Chakras, you know, of live cast. And as we are doing this today, we are going to be talking about fear. And I know that many of us have, you know, fear is a, is a big topic that we, a lot of people struggle with. And I thought, you know, I created a series that talks about fear and specifically about different types of fear. But before we get into that, I do want to find out what type of fears you guys are facing so we can maybe begin talking we can take a subject and and start talking about that particular fear so can we start and let's just see what fears you guys are facing whether it's physical spiritual mental you know financial whatever fears that you have let's talk about that for a second Ooh, so i actually think that i um get very nervous about having not that I have this, but about having um, too many people come at one time. I want to be able to serve people at a high level. And okay. so um, I do think that one of my fears is like I have a, a number of people I, like I, I think in my head, you know, I could work with, you know, this many people. But I have a fear that if we get beyond that, I, I, I've, I'm afraid I won't be able to give them the level of service. So I think that that's one of my fears. Okay, great. Thank you, Donna. Anybody else? Hmm. Go ahead, Nancy. Why can't I? Okay, Nancy. Here, I, I can't hear very well. Let me see if I put my headset in, if that, that'll help. Okay. I was just... We can hear you really well, though. Hello? Yep, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> what was the uh, question? <laughs> well, the question is, what are you afraid of? What do you, what's your fear? Uh, my fear is asking people if they need my help. Okay. Um, and probably from that fear, my fear is that they'll say no. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's, I don't know what other reason other than, you know, um, yeah. Okay. So I often feel fear before I do anything new. Then once I get into it, it's all good. And I'm like, that was stupid. <laughs> but I still have to sort of figure out how to overcome it because that holds me back for so long. It's like this emotional um, block. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what we're going to cover. Thank you, Nancy. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Anybody else? Go ahead. Um, it's Chelsea. So... Hi. I guess a fear that people don't care what I have to say, even if it's helpful. And I know that's not the case because oftentimes people tell me that they do care and it's helpful, but I have a hard time putting out new information because of that fear or anxiety. Okay. Um, and guys, I'm typing as you guys are talking, but go ahead. Anybody else? Um, this is Joanne. I, I guess do. my fear tends to surround, I don't know, I think my family, you know, they tell me, mommy, you need to stop worrying about that, that this will happen or that will happen, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I will have to, to battle. It, it could be whether they're out late, you know, and I haven't heard from them or um, that they shouldn't, it, it, it tends to be surrounding my family, especially my children, you know, that um, I, I battle sometimes when things happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're going and doing anything wrong, just making sure they protect, like I told the girls, you shouldn't be out late by yourself, you know, things can happen and that kind of stuff because I want to protect it. And um, my, my issue is that I said, well, God, as a Christian, I shouldn't worry about them because I should trust that you're protecting them and you, you have them. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I get upset with myself because I feel I'm not trusting him the way I'm supposed to be. So my battle, I think a lot of that is stems with God. You know, sometimes I say, well, 
do I really belong to you? Because I shouldn't be acting this way. And then I get on myself. And so my fear is all kind of intertwined with my spiritual um, connection. And a lot of times, maybe my children and making sure that they're protected and they're okay. I, I don't know if that, no, that, that's, that's, that absolutely makes sense. That's something that I, I think for me, I, I would love to just be <laughs> disappear. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll definitely work on that. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Anybody else? Here. Hold on. Mm -mm. How do you do that? Yeah, that Sorry. 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 Okay. Okay. I had I had muted. So what do I do? Disconnect audio. Okay. Um for me, I guess it's fear that I will will not live up to expectations of how great I know I can be. Okay. Um, I feel like I don't always see myself the way others see me and others see me in a better light than I give myself. Like mm -hmm. I'm really hard on myself. And um, I just want to live up to know that I will be all that God has for me to be and that I can live up to the leadership that I know I, I know I have inside of me and that I can, um, you know, be successful and have good positive influence. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess my fear is that I'm, I'm not going to be enough. Okay. Thank you for sharing. All right. Anybody else? My fear is similar to that. It's a fear of failure. Okay. Um, and one of the reasons I try to combat that, I think, is just, um, you know, studying, doing my research so I can outthink any problem that comes my way. Um, so I can have uh, complete control, even though sometimes there's just situations you can't control. But um, I that fear, uh, that fear kind of drives my um my work my work ethic and my my drive to you know, learn as much as i can mm -hmm. i'm like really an outlier and you might want to business gym so I put it. what no uh, chanel you mute yourself. okay go ahead cj you're talking about, you know, you have a fear of... Um, Me? Did you hear anything? I, I heard you, you talked about fear of failure, correct? Yeah. No, I, I was just saying a fear, fear, fear of failure. And it, uh, the fear kind of drives, my, um, drives me to learn as much as I can so I can combat any obstacle that comes in my way um, mm -hmm. with the knowledge and experience I've gained because I've worked so hard to mm -hmm. uh, up until that point, you know? But I know that most of the time, or sometimes, no matter how hard you work, there's going to be things that you can't control, and I'm afraid of those things. Okay. Oh. Well, that's that's a pretty big one. We'll we'll cover that because a lot of people have that. You know. Anybody else? I'll take you back off of what Donna said. I mean, that's kind of similar to what I, what I feel sometimes, and mm -hmm. you know it because you've seen it actually. Where um, <laughs> I just want to give of my time. I'm a giver for sure. And sometimes I, with the sweet, 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 um, but sometimes I give a little bit too much, I guess, at the time, mm -hmm. you know, I get a little uh, overwhelmed because I, I don't sleep. I just keep going until I get it done. And sometimes that's a, that's a challenge. So it, it gets a little overwhelming at times. So, you know, and, and I'll say, I'll tell you guys that I can relate to that. Just so you know, I, I don't have fear of that, but I do relate to that. And I used to be that way. So I can completely understand, and I'll I'll we'll cover that today. Okay, anybody? Yeah, we both crashed the other day, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I I crashed like a baby. I was like gone, you know. Um, but anybody else? I guess my greatest fear is uh, lack of self confidence. Okay. And um, financial fear um, of. Uh, not generating enough income, and that's why I'm exploring this new career opportunity here. I'm excited about that, and uh, so another fear is lack of focus. So I mm -hmm. need to uh, 
figure out how to, to focus and and follow through. Okay, well, uh, focus and follow through. Really? Okay, anybody, anybody have I forgotten or have not spoken? Okay, so we are, we are talking about, you know, now this topic is very sensitive, I know that, okay? And we all come from a different, um, I'm not gonna go, uh, if I go into chakras and stuff, it's gonna go too deep for you guys. So I'm gonna stay, keep it as simple as possible so you can understand, okay, from a perspective of thought process. So when you look at a, um, a human being, you know, what I found is there are three bodies that we live within, okay? We have a physical body, we have a spiritual body, and then we have energetic body. So when you take a look at all three of these bodies, you know, what typically happens, what I have found is that, you know, just fear is like, um, you know, you, you're making, many, many people will say it's not real, but it, it's real to some degree because we, we believe it's fear. So it's real to us because it's, we believe it's fear. So I'll give you an example. How many of you would take your hand and stick it into a, a hot, hot pan with, with the oil in it to, to fry French fries or something like that. How many of you would do that? No. <laughs> okay, so my question is, why would you not do that? Because there's danger associated with it. Okay, there's a danger associated with it. Okay, who, okay, what, why else would you not do that? You're 100% going to harm yourself. You, you are 100% you can harm yourself, okay? Anybody else? I'm talking about frying pan where there's a boiling oil and then they, somebody's, fr you're frying a french fries and instead of using the whatever you call it, I, English is not my first thing. So whatever that thing you call where you take out the french fries, right? The spatula or or whatever you call that, right? Uh, uh, um, so instead a of that- strainer or a spider. Right, there you go, strainer or spider. Why would you not put your hand in it? Go ahead. Well, we've all, we've all been burned in some way, shape or form, and we felt the, the pain that is associated with it. So to directly do that just probably doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you've walked on hot sand, you know how that feels on your feet, and this is much, much hotter. I mean, it's obviously boiling oil. So, yeah, it is, it yeah. is much harder and I agree it is obviously burning oil. Okay, so the reason I, I'm taking you guys here is because if you really stop and think about it, the, the fear exists based on your experience. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So fear exists based on your experience. But the question is, is there someone out there that's doing exactly what I'm describing, where they're frying something, whatever it is, and they're dipping their hand in it and they're flipping it over just like they would on a normal basis. Like, you know, you would use a, what did you call it, Dana? The strainer, the strainer, yeah, right? The strainer. So the No, I don't, I don't think that there are people who, who do that. I think there are all kinds of wonderful kitchen tools that were made up to avoid doing just that. But my question is, but that wasn't the question. The question was, is there anybody in the world that's doing that right now? And the answer to that question is yes. There's actually in a YouTube video that I watched literally a few weeks ago, somebody in India is actually frying, you know, like uh, hot potatoes and things like that. And they are literally just sticking their hand, their both hands in, and they are just flipping it over. And now if you really think about it, so what I'm saying to you is that fear itself is made up within. Like if, if the fear was actually real, right? That person wouldn't be able to you know, do that physically. It's, it's physically impossible to do that particular activity. So what we find is that within the confines of what we made up the rules in our minds, in our under chakra, right? We talk about chakras. For those of you who don't know, 
just so you know, there are seven main energy centers in your body and the, your energy flows from it. So I told you there is a physical body, there's an energetic body, and then there is a spiritual body, okay? So when we're looking at the energetic body itself, your Anju Chakra, your third eye chakra, you know, it's the limitations of that, just like CJ was talking about, you know, fear of failure, right? So the fear of failure exists because that there hasn't been a new set of information. We constantly go into our brain. So if you take a look at your heart, it's an opening of, into the world. It is an opening to the world where you are accepting everything that's coming in. But then when it goes into your mind, you, it, it's a narrowed set of focus. And because we are not going around and are really getting more information because we are only answering the questions that we know the answers to. So that limitations, you know, it, it is what drives your fear into a, 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 um, a whirlpool of downward spiral, okay? So when it comes to your energetic self, what happens is instead of energy, because we are supposed to go from an from a energetic body, you're supposed to go from bottom and you're supposed to go up. That's how you feel nirvana. Like when you pray to God, that's why if you take a look at a lot of temples or, or churches, right? They're pointing up, right? They're not pointing down in the, in the ground. They're pointing up. So energetically, we are, we are you know, observing this, this energy from from the spiritual beings right our seventh chakra you know which is what helps us you know that's the, your nirvanic state your state of bliss if you will so to reach there right what we have to understand is that the the one of the main reasons you are having this is because of the you know belief systems that we have set up to be whatever your belief system is that narrowed focus, even though the fear in reality is we are looking into the future and saying, when I said, would you put your hand into the heart thing? You know, like, you know, has anybody ever done it? And of course, we wouldn't do it because we know the experience, what the future is holding for us. That's what we assume it to be. That's why when you take a look at, you know, there are lots of exercises out there that you may have done. Like I, I did one time, you know, I did... Um, uh, martial arts thing at, a, at, a, at an event when I was really, really young. I'm talking, I was uh, 21, 22 years old at the time. And he, we had to break the board. And that was the exercise, right? You know, and, um, and uh, I did that, you know, successfully back then. Now, um, you know, he, he put me in a certain state of mind to make that work because there was no way on planet Earth I was going to do that on a normal day. Not going to work, okay? But because it put me in a certain state of mind, I was able to do that. So fear, it, it resides in your mula adhar, meaning your main base. So those of you who don't know about chakras, just so you know, they start from bottom of your spine and then they go up. So your main base of fear, when you look at the fear itself, is not there. It's not real. That it's, not, it's not something you can fight. So you have to understand to make the fear a lightweight thing. And it, it will never go away. So I'll give you an example. For instance, let's say that um, Donna has a fear of getting more clients, okay? And let's say that you get more clients. Now, you know, and let's say we, um, you know, you, you end up getting, you know, clients, in a, like you can, you can, you know, sort this, your time is concerned. We can sort it in different ways and we can make it more efficient. So what you're going to find is that, let's say that you have a fear of, um, like CJ has a fear of failure, right? Now let's just say that he becomes successful and he's making, you know, million dollars a year, okay, all of a sudden. And he, if he's making million dollars a year, right? Now, does that mean his fear will shrink or will it go, go up? Because fear is an attachment to something. Whenever you're attached to something, whatever that may be, you are going to be fearful. So your fear, your fear is attachment to success, attachment to failure, attachment to, you know, whatever in the future that you are predicting it to, predicting it to be. So what you have to do is be able to understand, you know, what is, what is doing to you first. So if you grow in wealth, your attachment to wealth is going to grow, correct? Correct? 
Overall, you're, you, you, you want to keep what you just got. So if you went from zero to $100,000 a year in income or $200,000 a year in income or a million dollars a year in income, what's going to happen is you don't want, because it's a, it's a lifestyle that you are used to, so you don't want to lose that, right? As soon as you have that attachment, you have fear. So the minute you are able to detach yourself from this situation, you are able to move forward. So in reality, from a, from a physical body standpoint of view, fear is, is almost like a lust for something. And if I was to take a look at um, you know, this computer, the laptop I have, you know, I, I always carry it very safely and I wanna make sure that I don't break it, right? Because that's what I use to do my webinars. And if this breaks, I have a problem, <laughs> right? So I'm always very careful with my laptop. So when you take a look at your, your things that you have, you know, one of the things you guys can do to, for at least for today's lesson is to learn to let go of few things. You know, learn to understand. I'm not saying let go of your dream, but learn to, to you know, manage this and under, by understanding that it is really not real. It is just in a, your prediction of what's going to happen in the future. So I'll give you an example. Um, there were two boys, you know, uh, back in India, and I'm very biased. All my examples are Indians, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it serves me multiple purposes, but all my examples are Indians. Okay. So in this case, you know, there were two boys, and uh, one was an eight year old, the other one was a 10 year old. The, you know, they, uh, the 10 year old grew up you know, with a aunt and an uncle who he used to go to aunt and uncle's house every single year uh, uh, during the summertime. And, you know, aunt and uncle, this aunt and uncle was, you know, his, um, or is his like a mom and the second mom and dad sort of thing. And he, he always had fun. The, the uncle owned a shingle factory. So one day, you know, they were, they were, you know, playing in the, in the, in the shingle factory. And in the shingle factory, you have to, you know, like, like dry your shingles. So once they are all done, when, uh, before they are cooked, you know, and after they, they're cooked, they have to be dried on, a, on a, like a rack, okay? So I'm talking about clay shingles. So in this particular place, there was a huge building. And there was this like, big opening in, inside of this building. And in that, in the, it was like a walk through, uh, through the, to, for the building for like, you know, big... Um, big machines to get in there to put the shingles up, right? So this, there was one evening, you know, two boys and aunt and uncle, they were taking a walk into the factory. They were just kind of checking on things and uncle made a challenge and said, if you make through this single factory, you know, I will reward you with something like an ice cream, okay? And uh, so the younger boy was a smart type of person. Like he was very, uh, very smart. And he said, I'm, I'm smart, you know? But he was also coming from a place of safety. He always liked safety. He always liked, you know, want to take care of himself. Wants to, it's all about him, right? He wants to make sure that's all done. So he said, no, I don't want to do that. You know, I'm not going to do that, that kind of thing. The older boy, he said, okay, you know what? I am actually, you know, he was more adventurous. He wanted to explore the world. He wanted to, you know, do something, you know, something big with his life. So he was a little bit more adventurous and he was willing to take a shot. So to make you know, one of the rules that they set up was in this factory, when you walk through it, you cannot run. You have to walk. So of course, the older boy, he said, okay, I will, I will do it, you know, and not for the reward, but for to see if he can make it. That was the main, main goal. So he, if he's, as he's walking, it's pitch dark around him. There's nothing you can see. The only thing you can see is the end of the tunnel. That's the only thing you can see. So as this boy is walking, his fear is mounting, his anxiety is mounting, but he's like, okay, I'm going to make it through because he, he, put the, he, he put the blinders on and he made sure that he got to the end. But to suppress his fear, one of the things he ended up doing, he, he, he told himself, he made sure that you know, every step he took, he was assuring himself, is, there, is, is my fear really real? As he was going along, what he was finding was nothing was really real. It was just an illusion of the, the, scare, the scariness because it was pitch dark all around him. And what he found was by walking through that, you know, through that you know, darkness, 
right? What he found is that ultimate satisfaction to tell you this story today because that boy was me. So what I will tell you, the reason I'm telling you this story is because, you know, I have experienced it firsthand that yes, you are fearful when you begin the journey. But if you just learn to take one step in front of the other and just start taking small chunk of steps, you are going to find that it is actually not real. So for instance, you know, like uh, CJ, if you have a fear of failure, right? You know, whatever in terms of success is concerned, what are you gonna find my friend as we are working together is that as you go further, it's actually not real. You know, Donna, as you, as you work, as we are talking, right? Your fear of not having enough time is just an illusion in your mind. Because in reality, there are so many people who can make it big, who have made it big in so many different levels. It just requires a different thought process, a different way of thinking in order for you to make it work. But anything is, it, it, is definitely you can figure it out but it requires a different type of thought process. So if you keep that in mind that your mul Adhar chakra, your, your main base is where the fear is coming from, you know, my friends, you can definitely overcome any fear that you have. And what I would suggest is next week, I'm gonna go, as we go, I'm, I've been going deeper into the topic as we are moving along every single week, okay? And I'm gonna go deeper and deeper and deeper. And I wanna make sure you guys are so good at this that no fear will not uh, will stop you. So what I would suggest is I would take a course of action. I would ask you to like uh, uh, do a, a small small thing that you are fearful of, and that you will do this week, whatever that small thing is. But that is Richard. If you think you're gonna get too busy, you know what? Try it out getting busy. Like maybe for an hour. Like you have no time for like a one hour. You're completely bombarded. Like try that out and see how it feels, okay? Like just for a little bit. I'm not saying for the entire week, or even though if, I, though if you try it, you might just love it. You might go, oh my God, this was so much fun. But you know, if you, if you want to try it for a shorter time, I would say pick out either a time or a distance that you wanna go into when it comes to fear, your fear, whatever that is. So that next week when we come, we want to get a little bit better than where we are today, okay? Because this is about progression. These webinars that I do are about progression. They're word of mouth webinars. They are, I have not marketed them yet, okay, in, in any place. I plan not to market them, just so you know. But, you know, because I want to keep it word of mouth. Every single week, we come in here and we talk about different topics. I mean, you know, Nancy ran a triathlon. Wow, I, I can't get over that right? At 57. That is amazing, right? You know, Dana can write a book. Now that's amazing. Richard can go out of the industry and, and come back. That's amazing, right? So when you take a look at people right around us, we have examples right around us that you can make it big. Your potential, I will tell you, is uh, more than 2,400 hours a second financial potential. So this is all about, you know, really coming together and fulfilling your financial potential. Now, I know some, some of you might say, I don't want to be rich, which is fine, but I'm sure that you want to be fulfilled. Whether, whether it's fulfilling your, your family life, you know, like, um, um, I believe uh, Ms. Chanel, right? Is that right? Um, she was talking about family, you know, so she's, fearful of losing family, right? You know, in terms of her family, she's concerned about protecting her family, right? And it's okay to be concerned about protecting your family, but just know that have faith that everything will work out. And if you just maintain your, your fear and become best friends with your fear, it will make it easier because as you grow, fear is gonna be right there. It's just gonna be in a different form. Does that make sense? So just don't give it any thought. Don't give it any mind. Like for instance, I'm sure some of you are married and you, you say, ah, I don't mind him. I, 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 I know how he's going to act when I do this, right? Whatever that, you're, whatever that you do, right? Okay, so if you can relate to that, 
you can relate to fear because that's exactly how you have to be with fear. Oh, it's there. Don't worry about it. Let it let it be. It's fine. It's fine that it's there. But just know that once you are secure in yourself, right, and you you tell yourself, I am here, and you literally are there, and you don't let anything stop you from from hitting the wall of what what is illusion of fear, which is not even real. Okay. So with that in mind, I just want to cover that topic today because I wanted to see. You know, I really wanted to, you know, like I want to go deeper into this topic. But, you know, until we g begin to get some momentum in this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it harder. And especially now I'm beginning to talk about the physical body, the spiritual body and the, and the um, you know, energetic body. These three different types of bodies and how to combine it into turning into a money machine. As I'm talking to you guys, you know, this will become a more interesting topic as we go along, but that requires a much deeper, you know, a, a much deeper kind of philosophical conversations for us to have. And with that in mind, I want to see what you thought about today and what are some of the comments you have for today. Would love to hear uh, your, your thoughts. I thought that was good. You, you gave, a, uh, you explained how fear works and gave us a concrete, um, assignment to go forward and start practicing to overcome the fear so that makes me happy thank you <laughs> thank you okay that's great anybody else if if i feel that the fear drives you know uh me to do better mm -hmm. um and the i get wealthier and wealthier and then the the fear would the fear follow me if that is my driving factor or since i have more surplus um, you know, income, my fear would decrease so, because it's getting less likely that I would, I guess, run out of money. Right. Um, at so, any point. I'm so, so the, to clarify that, right. So what, what it is CJ is that it's not that the fear really disappears, right? The fear is going to be there in a healthy way. You're gotcha. just able to manage it better energetically. Like for instance, with financial chakras, I have four stage process I take people through, right? So first stage is unlocking your financial potential. That's first step, right? Where I talk about, you know, these kind of topics, but at a deeper level. And I have a formula that I have developed called financial chakras, where I actually show you energetically how to, you know, do, do certain things fast, right? So, you know, so that's first stage. The second stage is about you know, on blocking your financial potential, where we actually take the measurement of where you are and we actually help you understand what, how do you measure your financial potential in dollars? That's the second stage too, because now we are getting into it. I show you a lot more deeper stuff, right? Stage three is, you know, um, attracting financial abundance where we show you consistent cash flow. So consistency is important. So any, any time I find is no matter what you're dealing with, these are the stages you're going to go through. Okay. So the third stage is, is a consistent, I'm talking about money. So because it's attracting financial abundance. So I talk about that. Right. And then the last stage is about building financial abundance, which is now is you can take some risk because you know how to maintain internally, you know how to you know, hold that. So yes, you're going to make more money. Yes. You're going to have the fear, but this is not going to affect you any longer because you are secure in yourself. Make sense? You have certain skills and accolades that you really need. Right now, the unknown of those accolades is what's keeping you from going, okay, what do I do? What do I do? Like, and I, I want to go further, but I can't. And part of the reasoning is because you have limited information that you have gotten so far. And as we go along and you get more information and you expand, right, into other horizons, you know, the, that's the reason I gave you guys the example of the, you know, dipping your hand in the, in hot oil. I would recommend no, don't do that. But the, what I'm saying is it's possible because somebody else has done that. Right. So it's just like that, uh, that little ant, you know, who, or a spider who goes up the wall, right. That is the same, same story, but anybody. Okay. So does that help you CJ? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it, it helps you manage better. Okay. That's all. Anybody else? Um, I um, guess I'm well, looking forward to next steps because what that's one of the things I always tell myself. I'm like, 
fear isn't real, danger is. So if you recognize that danger is real, you can take the necessary precautions to not put yourself in danger, but the fear you're experiencing isn't real. Right. So I understand that and I'll do the stuff, but that anxiety around it does not go away. It may go away in the moment, but as soon as it's time to do it again, it's the same thing building up. Absolutely. And, and it will happen to you every time. So, uh, you know, um, um, Chelsea, right? Okay. So, yes. okay, great, Chelsea. Uh, so Chelsea, you know, like it will happen because when I was doing speaking engagements for, you know, Congressman Stanley Hoyer, Congressman Roscoe Bartlett, Congressman Cummings, and I was speaking for all small business development centers in Maryland. I was a keynote speaker there. And what happened was, you know, I had practiced enough. I was speaking all the time, but every time I got on the stage, I mean, I clearly remember at Morgan State University where Elijah Cummings was coming there to, you know, he was like the, um, he was running, right? Basically, like he was, he was in the political arena, but I was speaking for the Small Business Development Center. So he was, I shared a stage with Elijah Cummings, basically. So, and it was his rally and his event. So one of my job was to get people up and going. And I'm here at the Morgan State University. There was about 400 business owners in that auditorium that they have, and it was completely full. And I, am, I remember clearly, I was in the back, and I was nervous wreck. Even though I had given the same, I had given my story of how I came here and how I built a business, and I, was, I knew my steps, and I knew my presentation, but I was still scared, right? But that doesn't, so just because you are at a different level, that really doesn't, doesn't hurt you. It actually helps you because you are able to deal with it much in a much more, more better manner energetically. Does that make sense, Chelsea? Yes. Good. I'm glad that it helps. Okay. All right. Anybody else? It's uh, Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Um, hi. I know you're saying that fear is made up within from our belief system mm -hmm. and that, yeah, says something, it's physically impossible to do something if you have fear in that area. So if fear exists based on my experience, so then what I would think needs to be done is to figure out what experience that might have happened that would trigger those fears and then know how to deal with it. So the thing is, where, where did it start? Because sometimes I say, okay, well maybe, I'm feeling this way because something happened, but I know sometimes people suppress things. I mean, how do you deal with, how do you get over that? Say, okay, well, I know I need to deal with this, but how do you get to a point where, okay, if it's within me and it's based on something I experienced, how do you be able to find out what that experience was, how you deal with it? That's, that would be my issue. Okay, that's great. So Joanne, let me ask you a question. What's your fear again? I wrote, I'm sure it's in my list, but I want my, my fear was the one with family. It was in China. It was the one with family. Yes. Yes. Okay. Just that so overall. What about family that really is fearful to you, number one? And what are some of the things that, um, you know, some of, the, some of the steps that you, you think you should take and you are not taking? I don't know why I should feel that way about my family. I haven't had a traumatic, I've been blessed. We haven't had a traumatic experience in our lives where someone got killed or anything like that. You know, so I don't, I really don't know where this fear is, is coming from because I was like heights. I don't like heights, you know, and this dangerous stuff. Or, oh, someone could fall. And I, 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 I don't know. Huh? That partially came from the roller coaster. Oh yeah, there was a roller coaster with that. One a roller coaster opened up on me, but it clicked back in. So I, and I had experience with the with the plane stuff, you know, people. But um, I, but I you don't get know. on planes. I get on planes, but when I go through turbulence, I go back to when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. we were going through turbulence. I was flying from Liberia to the Congo, and it started. The plane was really moving. And this guy next to me told me the plane was going to crash. Mm -hmm. So of course I start crying and everything and lay behind, laid him out, told him, no, it's the weather, the plane's gonna be okay and everything like that. So every time I go through turbulence, I have to go into prayer because uh -huh. it, it triggers me back. It's not as bad as it used to be. But mm -hmm. it was a time like, oh my gosh, I'll be so fearful. Yes. And I will it would take me back to that. But it's gotten better where I can fly and you know, there are times I still have to pray and then I'm okay. But um 
So I, 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 I don't know when it comes to my children. Just about getting into it. Can I take that one? So, um, yeah, give me one second, Richard. Let me make a suggestion for her, okay? I think I know what it is, where okay, it came from. She, like, so there was a summer, I think, 94. My, I got hit by a car. My brother broke his shoulder, almost broke his neck doing a backflip. And my sister got mm -hmm. hit with a, she broke a, like a, a rod into her eye and almost was blind. Oh, okay. All in one summer. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what happened. Okay. So Joanne, what yeah, I would, what that I would, could be, I didn't, yeah. Yeah, that could <laughs> be. So what I would do is, if I was you, to, to overcome this situation, I would go to the past and write down all the things. And since you have your kids with you, I would write down all the negative things that has happened. Don't take any action. Just write down all the negative things that have happened, so you can get to give yourself some time to reflect on it. Number one. And then, you know, write down some strategies you might be able to t uh, implement. You know, whatever strategies you think you can implement, just write them down. Don't implement any strategies. Don't go any further, but just do that as a small thing you can do for right now, okay? Don't try to bite this all at once. Just go one step at a time. Write down everything in the past and make sure you have it on paper so you can see it clearly. So th start there and it will help you open up some things that you didn't really think about like you know um chelsea just mentioned about your uh, you know her, her sister and, th and things like that that would be scary and i can see why as a mom you would be in that, that situation go ahead joanne okay i'll, I'll do that channel just put me on video i didn't know i wasn't being seen okay okay i'll i'll i'll, I'll try that I'll, I'll definitely do that okay please do okay thank you joanne okay so go ahead, Richard. you had some yeah. thoughts so I, I had mentioned it before, but they, I don't think they were on the call about the reticular activator. And so it's the part of your brain that allows you to recognize smells and know where you are. It, it's the, the fight or flight. Um, it, it's all that. If you hear a song, you know where you were. When you heard it, it brings back good memories. It makes you smile. It's, it, they're triggers. And so it sounded like, you know, there's some triggers, some, some traumatic events that happen. And it maybe even lays even before from, from youth. That, and then something else happened, and then the, having the tra traumas with the kids, having the roller coaster, all that kind of adds up, and it it, it causes a a re reaction. And so the the thing to do, because you do talk about prayer, and if you're a woman of faith, a person of faith, then and get to your meditation state, get to that meditation state to um, to prevent it, because that's that's where we become in control of our mind, is when we um, and go and we we really take control of it by, um, by getting to that meditative state, whether it be through prayer, whether it be through yoga, whether it be through whatever. And you talked about, was it last week or the week before about the beads and yep. whatnot? And so that's a, a, good, a good point to go, just go there and preemptive strike it because we have the ability to take the control and we can, can take control of a reticular activator in our mind and then replace a bad habit, which is going to fear with a good habit, which is going to a place of peace. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, what do you mean by beads? I will, I will, uh, so I have this uh, prayer beads that I get and I, I talked about a, a story about a prayer bead. And what, what I'll do uh, with you, Joanne, is um, I would love to, you know, get you those prayer beads and stuff like that. But let's uh, table the topic for next week. Um, you know, we want to make sure that I cover it in detail. So I'll be, I'll be happy to cover that topic, okay? Uh, you know, because okay. I do want to make sure I'm mindful of everybody's time while we are doing this as well. So I just wanted to, but I do want to have an open-ended dialogue, okay? So I will definitely cover that next week for sure, okay, Joanne? Okay, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? Any comments, thoughts? And what would you like to learn next week? I would love to know that, okay? I had, I had a comment uh, just as I was thinking about um, what Joanne was saying uh, through that entire time. Um, just a kind of, kind of a way to uh, rationalize all of it is I know when I, I first started Family First Life, um, one of the things that we do a lot is just staying on the phone and you, you obviously get a lot of rejection with that, but the key takeaway to all of it is that I was okay on the other side. Like, it's not like I, I, I could have 
I had a choice. I could take it one of two ways. I could continue and keep getting better, or I could just quit and live on with the idea that I can't do that because I'm going to experience the rejection again. So you can apply that choice that I made to see more significant things that happen in life where uh, the amount of experiences that you've had in the past that have been negative, the thing that you have to hold on to is that you got through that experience and spiritually you have to make the, the choice to be at peace with that experience and move forward to experience it again because the outcome of the future experience won't necessarily be the outcome of the past experience. Yeah, so, and, and that's a yeah. great point, CJ. And, and what I would recommend is everybody, just so you know, if you're fearful of something, whatever that is, doesn't really matter. I would really ask you to write down what is making you fearful and what is one small thing you're going to do to move forward. Because guys, this is just like I told you about my story on how I went through darkness. It was one step at a time. Okay. It wasn't, I didn't take a big plunge and said, oh, I made it through. It wasn't like that. It was one step at a time. So I would highly encourage you to take a small step. A small step, whatever that is, that's good for you. That's that's good for you. It's got nothing to do with me or anybody else around you or anybody on this Zoom call. It's all about you. Okay. So that being said, if you take a small step, it will help you tremendously without trying to confusing this whole thing out, you know, and, and going much more deeper into philosophical, you know, points of view. We are not, I don't at least I'm not feeling that everybody's there yet, but we are all progressing towards it. And I think if you take small chunks, you know, you can take, you know, to eat an elephant at a time. I'm vegetarian, so I will never eat that. But, you know, just so you know, (laughs) (laughs) you know, but that being said, you know, I think that, um, you know, if you just take small steps, it will help you. Okay, guys. And just like, you know, CJ even said, just, you know, phone calls helped him, you know, one, one phone call at a time, it helped him. So anybody else that has a uh, any comments or questions before we jump off today? No, thank you. Thank you, guys. And I want to thank you guys so much. You know, I'm going to make sure um, you guys can go to, um, you know, starting next week, I will have a link that you guys can go to. You guys will be able to go to my website, um, you know, financialchakras.com, and you guys will be able to register, and, and, you know, and we are going to have a great time. And I'm going to show you a glimpse of this site so you guys can see. You are the first group of people to ever see part of my website, okay? So there's going to be a website. It's going to be very calming, very relaxing place where you can come and learn about, you know, financial uh, chakras and what they are and how they operate and things like that. And it, it is a holistic financial and business ashram. Ashram is a very spiritual place you can come to. Um, and, you know, there, there's, my, there's my event here and stuff like that, which I will share with you guys. Um, there's going to be a all, all, whole bunch of things you can learn about, you know, different things um, that you can do. You know, these are some uh, events you guys can attend, you know, and, and things like that. And of course, I'm going to have programs, right? As I had said, like four levels of programs. And then you can even become a certified trainer, you know, with me if you, are choose, if you choose to become a certified trainer. Um, and then, of course, there are more testimonials and things like that. The, the site is being built. It will be done sometime next week. But I just wanted to share this with you because I have never shared this with anybody. You know, it, 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 I mean, I, I, I've kept it really close to my heart. I've been working on this for a long time as far as formulas, and it will be a truly an amazing place where you can come to to learn how to unlock, unblock, untrack, and build your financial abundance. So would love you starting next week. We'll be, this will be live, and I want to thank you all so much for being here today. Please, please, please share this with your friends. It's the same link you received today. All you have to do is share it. Starting next week, we'll have a nice URL and all this, you know, good jazz. But for right now, if you can share this link, you know, I would love to see if we can get about 20 people in here next week. And I think that would be a rocking networking opportunity for you guys and really just learn from each other and meet each other. And soon there will be a Facebook group. You make sure you join my Facebook group called Financial Chakras. If you go online and join my group and I'll be, I'll be sharing these links inside of that as well. And there'll be additional trainings that I'll be doing as well inside of that group. Again, it's called Financial Chakras. So those of you who don't know spell, how to spell chakras, C-H-A-K-R-A-S. Okay, so I'll, I'll write it down here in the chat. Okay.
Okay, I have it in the chat. So those of you who have it, you know, so you can go to Financial Chakras group on Facebook and join us, you know, there. And, I, I, and I sh I'll share information and more information as we move along. So with that in mind, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I love you guys a lot. And I cannot wait to see you, you know, next week. Okay. I'm writing this whole thing about a formula called E plus R equals O. Thank you, Thank Ash. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.